This is my new studio. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well and welcome to the new Creative Source Studio. You know about six weeks ago our landlords informed us that they no longer wanted to renew the lease and we had four weeks to find a new place and move out including moving my studio. Now a lot of you said to me at the time Mike this may be a blessing in disguise and you know what? I think you were right. I can't wait to show you around. But first of all, let's thank the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. If you follow the VIP link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off an already incredible price to distribute your music around the world. Now let's start off by taking a look at the beating heart of this studio, the computer. So this gives you an opportunity to talk about one of my favorite features about this new studio, and that's the access I have behind the desk. It's really comfortable, gives me quick access to all of those cables I seem to have to unplug and plug in on a daily basis. A huge workflow advantage there. And it's also where my PC is, back in this corner. And I do use PC rather than Mac. That's primarily because some of the software I use is only available on PC. If it wasn't for that, I'd seriously be considering one of the new Macs because their performance for audio production is just incredible. But the performance for this is also very, very good. It's an Intel 11th generation i9 processor and I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM in there. And also really importantly for me, because I use a lot of disk space, I have 12 terabytes of SSDs in there. That means they're also very quiet. We'll talk about how loud this computer is in a moment. But all of that data is automatically back up to a server which I have in another part of the house and that in turn is automatically backed up to the cloud which really sort of gives me a little bit of peace of mind in terms of losing really important data. So back to how loud this is because a lot of people look at this computer and they think it must be really noisy with this open uh, case design and they see these three big fans spinning away. Now this computer is actually water cooled and those three fans are to cool the radiator but they're not ordinary fans they're what they call magnetic levitation fans and rather than have um, bearings and things like that in there they're actually floating on magnets which makes them super super quiet it's one of the things i love about this pc so that's kind of the heart and soul of my production but there's another really important part of my daily existence in the studio and that's my desk Regulars to the channel will know that I actually designed and built this desk myself. And I did that so that I could have it exactly as I want it. It's not necessarily the cheaper option though, if that's what you're thinking. Now I've got a couple of spaces at the back for some rack gear, which I want easy access to. And also importantly, I've got space on the desktop in terms of depth for my Surface controller and my computer keyboard as well. A lot of the desks that I looked at didn't have enough depth for that. Most importantly for me though, I do have a rollout tray which can accommodate an 88 key keyboard. That's a big workflow advantage for me there to have that at my fingertips. Now over the course of the last three years or so, it has got worn out and damaged here and there. So I used the opportunity while we were moving to actually strip it down and re-varnish it. So it's nice and fresh and ready for all of this gear. Talking about all of this gear, now at the back left hand side we have the ART voice channel. As its name suggests this is primarily designed for vocals but you could use it for anything really. It's a tube preamp with a compressor, with an equalizer, with a DS, it's just loaded up with features. I just don't think it's talked about enough to be honest with you. I must make a video about it. At the front of my desk I've got a couple of things which are not really necessarily audio related. I've got my speed editor here which is a device which connects up to my video editor 
editing software, DaVinci Resolve, make things a bit easier there. And then I have my loop deck. This is a, a little bit like a stream deck, or I think they're called. Um, basically, you, you can use it with multiple programs on your computer. You can customize it. Um, you can get quick access to functions and things. It's also got MIDI features and capabilities on the loop deck here, which is just super useful, of course, if you're a music producer. Then towards the front, you can see my computer keyboard and mouse, of course, here. I prefer to use gaming keyboards and mice, mouses, never quite sure what that is, uh, because I like the color lights on them and you can see them in the dark. That's my excuse anyway, I just think they look cool. Um, towards the back of the desk here and right in the middle, kind of in the center, is my Icon QCon Pro G2 Surface Controller, okay? So for those of you who don't know, this doesn't actually process audio. It's kind of like a remote control for your door, but you can sort of feel a little bit like you're using a console or a mixing desk. Great if you like that tactile feel, You've got transport controls on their motorized faders, the lot. Now at the back towards the right hand side, we have my main audio interface, which I use all the time. That's the Antelope Audio Discrete 8 Pro Synergy Core, quite a mouthful. Apart from all the amazing features it has on it, I've come to love its routing capabilities. They're really, really in depth. You can really send anything to anywhere, um, which I find very very handy at times so loving that um, then below that we have one of my favorite things in my studio which is my Audion ASP 800 this is a kind of a, I'm gonna call it legendary this is a legendary uh, mic preamp it's got those preamps that we've come to know and love from Audion uh, very very clean but also there's a couple of colored channels on there as well I've made a video about that um, then next to that or just in front of that we have a desktop audio interface that's the universal audio Apollo X4 this is an incredible audio interface now I have it sat here mainly so I can access um, their plugins in real time and not have them running on my PC because I really love some of their plugins. But I do use it as an audio interface when I'm using my laptop for recording, which I may be doing in another part of the house or I may be taking it out actually mobile. Um, and that's just an incredible piece of gear to have at your disposal for that, I've got to tell you. Now, in terms of my, oh, one more thing before we talk about studio monitors, because we're going to talk about monitoring, is on the far right hand side, I have my main headphones, which I use on a daily basis. These are the Audis MM500s, simply the best headphones I've ever used in terms of detail. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say. Um, but they are pretty pricey. You don't need these, but if you can get them, get them. Um, now, my monitors, my studio monitors. I'm using the Adam Audio A7Vs, okay? These are the sort of newer versions of their legendary kind of A7Xs, I think they were called. Mine's gone a little bit blank there, but yeah, these are the newer versions. And I'll tell you what they're really good for. They're, they are really good, by the way, but they, they sort of came into their own recently, again, because after I moved studio, of course, I ran Sonarworks Sound ID to correct my monitoring for my room, okay? Now, normally, for those of you who have done that, you then have to run a plug-in in your door so that your mix is corrected in your room, and you have to sort of switch that off um, to, when you actually mix down. Now, what they've done here is they've collaborated with Adam Audio and you can actually upload those profiles that you create into the monitors themselves, okay? There's a LAN connection on the back to do that. What that means is those profiles are permanently on your monitors. You don't have to use the plug-in anymore, even if you didn't, were not running a door or you had your computer switched off, um, your monitors are still being corrected. So that's absolutely awesome. Now, sort of down below on the pullout, keyboard tray is one of my favorite purchases ever. This is the Arturia Keylab 88 Mark II. An incredible keyboard, just high quality keyboard itself. I think they call it a key bed if I'd know that if I was a keyboard player. And a whole bunch of in-depth controls, um, door controls, um, you've got sort of CC controls and things. You've got drum pads on there as well at your fingertips, just everything you could really want 
from uh, a MIDI keyboard controller. Okay, so I almost got down below there, didn't I, with that, but not quite. There's a few things um, down by my feet, which I'm gonna walk through right now. So at my feet on the left-hand side, I've got an Adam Audio T10S subwoofer and a foot switch, so I can switch it on and off. And talking about foot switches, I've also got this Roland sort of pedal controller here. This means that as well as having a sustain pedal when I'm playing piano, I can also have like a damp pedal and things like that as well. So really cool, I'm liking that. And then on the right-hand side, I've got a small rack here. And at the top of that rack, I've got a Presonus Studio 192 audio interface. This is no longer in production, but I still love it. And I have a lot of other things routed into it. And then when I make tutorials for you guys, I generally use that as my audio interface with other things routed into it. Below that, I have a Furman power conditioner. I wouldn't be without that, because if I was without that, there'd be a lot of noise in my signals, and I don't like that at all. And then I have a selection of audio interfaces. I've got a, a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 there. I have that because so many people have it, it's nice to be able to sort of compare it to other things or compare other things to it, including things like the new, or the not the new, but new for me, Universal Audio uh, Vault 276, I think they call this one. I haven't actually tried this yet, but I've got hold of it so that I can compare it to other audio interfaces and give you guys a verdict. Talking about newish audio interfaces, I've also got the Audion ID24 here. I recently reviewed this and it's now sitting here because I aim to sort of work it into my workflow. I'll talk about that in another video, but I really like this audio interface. And kind of last but not least here, um, I have this Cranbourne Audio EC1. I've just recently got this. Now this is a mic preamp, which is at a lot, has a lot of really high and clean gain, as well as a great headphone amplifier on it as well. Um, but I got it for the mic app primarily, and I'm using that for my Shure SM7B. Now this is the microphone you often see me using. It's on the arm on my desktop. Now the SMB may be legendary, but it also is a little bit problematic in terms of gain. It requires a lot of gain and it needs clean gain. Now a lot of people don't have that on their audio interface, so they use something called a cloud lifter a lot of the time to sort of boost the signal before they go into their audio interface. I've got a cloud lifter, but I have to say, I haven't been very impressed with it at all, which is why I got hold of this Cranbourne Audio EC1. And I'm gonna tell you right away before I make the video, it has improved that significantly. Now, all of the rack gear that you see on my desktop and just below my desktop is actually all hooked up with ADAT, okay? Um, and also I'm using word clock to keep it all in sync with each other. So that's why these particular pieces of rack gear are all together on the desktop. But I do have some other rack gear which isn't doesn't have ADAT and we're gonna talk about that now. So at the top of my rack here, I have a WA-2A from Warm Audio. This is an LA-2A style compressor. I absolutely love this on vocals, acoustic guitar and bass guitar as well for particular songs. Below that, I have a Warm Audio WA-76, which is an 1176 style compressor, which is really quite different. I haven't used this in any productions yet, but I will be and you'll be hearing about it or seeing about it in a video quite soon. Below that, I have a headphone amp. This is from ART, it's a Head Amp 6 Pro. If you've got to buy a headphone amp, uh, so with multiple outputs, I highly recommend this one. Super clean output, lots and lots of gain. And it's got some cool sort of features on there so that you can create some individual mixes on the fly with this. I won't go into that now, but it's really quite clever. Then below that, I have my patch bay. Now there's lots of patch bays on the market and a lot of them fall short for me, to be honest with you. It seems like such a simple thing, but um, a lot of them with the different routing types, which for a patch bay, in case you don't know, there's normal, half normal, and through. We'll have the switch for that on the back. Why? I don't understand that. But anyway, this has got the switches on the front, which is why I got this particular one. Um, then I have a Furman power conditioner, again, same as the other one. And then I have a Behringer headphone amp, which isn't even plugged in or switch onable because it's not very good, to be honest with you. It's just so noisy, which is why I bought the ART one. Now at the bottom, 
below all of those things in the bottom of this rack I have a box which has got my patch cables and things and then you'll see three wooden boxes there as well those are all microphones the kind of more special microphones I guess um, that includes an SC electronic VR2 which is an active ribbon mic I featured that in one of my videos really love that on acoustic guitar combined with another microphone I also have a pair of Neumann KM184 this is probably my favorite type uh, small diaphragm condenser for acoustic guitar it's not good for all acoustic guitars for all songs but overall I think it's uh, very they're very very good and then finally i have a neumann u87 legendary vocal mic there i won't be making a video about that but i'm aiming to include it in some videos soon in some creative ways and um, with some cheaper microphones look out for that it should be fun now just over to the side here you can see the corner of some stands that i had to build for this studio let's talk about that so one of the challenges I had putting together this studio was the fact that we are in a rental, so we're not allowed to drill any holes in the wall, can't directly attach anything to the wall. And of course, I wanted to put some things up on the wall, including my sound absorption panels. You can see one of the smaller ones here. And what I thought was I'll make some stands, but when I began to cost that out, it got pretty expensive pretty quickly. So in the end, I bought some TV stands off of Amazon, got those pretty cheap and just adapted them for this purpose. Add a little bit of wood on the front there to sort of match the rest of my studio and give me a place to hang some cables and things like that. Just at the bottom there, by the way, you're just out of shot a little bit probably, but there's uh, a thing there called the Little Bro. This is a stage box, okay? So it's just got a snake attached to it with a bunch of cables inside. And I've got that hooked up to one of my audio interfaces so I can easily just plug in a microphone from here without going around the back. Um, of my desk to do that. But I like this one in particular because it's also got a couple of TRS uh, connections on there. So I can just easily plug in some headphones as well, which is what you want normally when you're back here recording vocals or something, you'll want to plug the microphone in and the headphones as well. So worth mentioning there. Now, the other type of stand that I needed or was something to get a couple of guitars up high, which I would normally have up on the wall. So I created these stands, which are basically amp stands, okay, with a little bit of storage underneath and then they have this kind of guitar stand coming up. That gets a couple of my guitars up and out of the way, giving me a bit more floor space. Let's dive into some of these stands in a bit more detail. So on the first of these kind of amp stands, I have this Fender Rumble 25 bass amp. This is a practice amp, which I probably wouldn't use for recordings generally, because I'll probably get a better result with an amp sim than I would with this, but it's great to have it here just so I can quickly plug in a bass and practice something or work something out. Below that, in the sort of storage part of this, I have some more microphones, um, those being a Nude C12. This is my only tube uh, microphone. I really like that kind of sound that it has, uh, that sort of vintage sound. Uh, then I have an AKG C414, which is a great microphone, but not for everything, okay? So it, it's a bit hit and miss, if I'm honest with you, but it is nonetheless a fantastic quality microphone. Then I have a couple of Austrian Audio, uh, I think they're called CC8, if I've got that right. Um, these are newish to me, um, but they're great. The little small diaphragm condenser microphones. Got a bit of a darker sound than the Neumanns that I was talking about earlier, so it could be better for much brighter sounding guitars. Now, just quickly, over in the corner here with this other sound panel stand, I've got some headphones hanging on there. Those being um, some closed back ones, the uh, Audizi uh, LCD XCs. These are closed back versions of their other famous headphones. I've got some Austrian Audio. I think they're high X60s, these ones. I really do like the Austrian Audio headphones very very, very much. Some bad dynamic DT700 Pro X's, or are they D700 Pro X's? Getting my model names mixed up, but also very, very good. Sort of new-ish, you could say. And then uh, the latest of the Olo headphones. I've been trying these out, but I haven't made a video about them yet. But Olo headphones really are very, very good and worth checking out out. Now that's the sort of first of our stands. Let's go to the other side of the room and take a look at the other amp stand. On this stand I have a Vox AC10, a pretty nice little amp actually and don't be fooled by the 10. It's 
pretty loud as well, but quiet enough to be used in a studio. I like this, a nice tube amp, straightforward. You can get a little bit of grunge out of it. Very nice indeed. Below that, I have uh, some guitar pedals. Um, I'm not gonna go through those. If you're an electric guitarist, you probably recognize most of them anyway. But what's that you say? Huh? Talk about the guitars. Sure. And what better place to start than with my Gretsch 5420 TG. This is a limited edition guitar in Cadillac green. I absolutely love the look of this, but I also love playing it. I like the sound of it, and I also like the, the way it feels, okay? If you've never played a Gretsch before, I urge you to try it. They're very different to the other types of common electric guitars out there. On the other side of the room, I have my Taylor 814CE Deluxe. This is way more acoustic guitar than I deserve. It's an absolutely exquisitely crafted um, instrument. It's also just amazing in terms of playability and has a great sound for recording, especially I feel. Moving on from there, you probably notice I have a guitar rack with a few guitars in there. I'm afraid it's a bit of a Fender Taylor Fest. Let's just quickly run through those. I've got my Strat, which is just a player series Fender Strat, which has been sort of souped up in all kinds of different ways. It's got a Goto floating tremolo on there. And recently I upgraded the pickups to some Seymour Duncan in California 50s and that really was an upgrade goodness me made a huge difference to the sound of this guitar love that next to that I have my Taylor 214 CEN now the N stands for nylon this is a nylon string guitar I made a video about this actually it's one of my favorite guitars it's absolutely beautiful and it doesn't it's it's really a nylon string guitar rather than a classical guitar and it's got some features that you normally find on so steel string guitars which makes the playability on this is very very good the intonation is also incredible um, moving on from there we have my Taylor 210 CE this is a dreadnought guitar not as easy to record as my 814 uh, very throaty sounding but if you want a particular sound you want that dreadnought sound it's a great guitar I love playing that one too and then finally I've got as much bass guitar as I deserve maybe more than I deserve in actual fact since I'm not a bass guitarist um, uh, this is an, another player series Fender Jazz bass I haven't done anything to this whatsoever but I do enjoy the basic sound of it if you'll excuse the pun now i do regard myself as a guitarist but for most of us if you've got a home studio you probably end up sort of forcing yourself to play keyboards as well on the top here i've got this yamaha qs300 synthesizer hardly a classic synth i gotta say but it's sort of useful to me in the sense that i picked it up really really cheap and i like having something here which I don't have to have a computer switched on to get some sound from it, just the headphones there. So yeah, great for sketching out some ideas, um, no problem at all. Below that, I have a Native Instruments S61 controller keyboard, an absolutely fantastic keyboard, especially if you're in that kind of Native Instruments ecosystem. If you're using like complete, you can browse all the instruments. Now, right at the bottom, uh, it's not a keyboard, but it's MIDI related. I have this Behringer uh, MIDI foot controller. This is an incredible piece of gear and it does exactly what I wanted it to do. However, it's crazy complicated to figure out. The instruction manual is absolutely mental. It took me months to figure out how to do some basic things in it. I don't like it when things are too complicated like that. I'll tell you one thing that is not complicated though, that's using the sponsor of this video, DistroKid, to distribute your music. By using DistroKid, you get to release your music directly to some of the best platforms on the planet. We're talking Spotify, iTunes, TikTok, Amazon, you know, all of the household names. And you don't need to open any accounts there because DistroKid does all of that for you. Now, once you've created your master and your album artwork, it's as easy as filling in a friendly form, uploading them, and DistroKid takes care of the rest all for one flat annual fee and DistroKid takes none of your royalties. Sign up with my VIP link in the description and you'll get an extra 7% off. In a dark mysterious corner at the rear of my studio is a curtain and behind the mysterious curtain is the Wizard of Oz. No, not the Wizard of Oz. There is a kitchenette in here, except I'm not gonna be using it as a kitchenette because I don't want a buzzy fridge in the background of my recordings. So I'm using it 
both as a storage area, but it's turned out to be a great sort of work area. It's got some benches in there if you like. And when I just want to take things apart or fix things or solder things, things like that, it's been very handy indeed. I've also got a charger station uh, set up in there for all of my recharging of various different devices in there, as well as some drawers with many more microphones in there of various different sorts. Um, Many people, though, have suggested that I should use it as a vocal booth, and I think I will eventually, but it's got to be treated for that. At the moment, there's lots of hard surfaces in there, and it wouldn't be great for recording vocals at the moment. So I'm going to put together maybe some sort of portable gobos or sort of sound panels that I can put in there when I want to use it as a vocal booth. I'd love your ideas for this. Put them in, in, in the comments down below. If you've done that at all, let me know about the results that you've had. So a lot of this has still got to be done. There's a few other things I've still got to do in the studio as well. So I've got to say, I'm pretty pleased with this as a starting point for my new studio. And it's really thanks to people like you, and I do mean you, people who actually watch these videos, especially until the end, you make this possible for me. So I'm so thankful. Actually, let me know in the comments down below if you're one of the people that made it to the end. I'll be super impressed. Now, what else can I do to this studio? Well, nothing too urgent. I will make those upgrades to the kitchenette, probably turning it into some kind of a vocal booth. And also, I've got to still do some things for the sound treatment. You can see there's a lot of panels around me and I've got some corner traps back there, but I do need some corner traps for the back of the studio. I've got to build those. But it feels a little bit like a kind of a solution looking for a problem because I've got to tell you, one of the biggest things that has improved with this studio is just the sound. That's something I couldn't actually show you in this video. Right away, there's a massive difference in terms of how controlled the sound is. So I'm super pleased about that. Now, of course, you don't actually need all of this gear at all. I don't want you to think that you need this to make music. You need a lot less than this to actually make some great music. If you want to find out what you do need, I suggest you watch this video right here.